What's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and today we have our third, right, Andrew? Third installment? Third? You're behind my camera. Of <laughs> Martial Arts Word Association. If you missed the first two, this is where Andrew gives me seemingly unrelated words, and I have to relate them back to martial arts. Why are we doing a third one of these? Because they're a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> we have a really good time with this. Stick around. Enjoy. If you're new to what we do, go to whistlekick.com. See all the projects, products, services, books, free stuff that we've got going on for you, the traditional martial artist. Our goal here at Whistlekick is to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artist of the world, no matter what you train, where, when, how, or why you do so. In fact, I, we believe sincerely that there is more that we have in common than separates us, and we are committed to supporting that notion and we have a very lofty goal that everyone in the world train for six months. That'd be never nice. happen. We'll never get to 100%, which means we get to keep going as long as we want. If you want to go deeper on this show, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. See all the things over there. Sign up for the newsletter. Uh, maybe maybe tip us a few bucks. Or just look at all the episodes we've ever done because they're all there. Photos, videos, links, show notes, transcripts. You can copy those transcripts and paste them into your iPad or Kindle. And then you can read the episodes if you prefer to do that, right? Like there, we put so much into all these to give you the option of experiencing our content in whatever way makes you happy. And with nearly 800 episodes, because we're coming up yeah, on it. We're coming up now, on it. Uh, they're guaranteed you were gonna, you're going to find an episode or two that you like. And, and if you don't, uh, you're not trying hard enough. If you don't, we'll give your money back. Double your money back. Yep. If you want to support us in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain, if you value the content and the other things that we do, there are a lot of things you can do, but here are three. You could grab one of our books on Amazon. We have books that are collections based on episodes, as well as other things like the martial artist handbook that I wrote. You could tell friends about what we do. Grab this episode or another episode, find an episode, send it to somebody in your school, someone that you trained with 20 years ago. I don't care who it is. Help us grow because as we grow, it means we're getting new and different guests from all over the world that train in different things. In fact, Andrew, I had a thought earlier today as I was recording with someone from a country that I don't believe we've ever had a guest from. Mm -hmm. We should get a map somehow and figure out what countries we haven't had guests from oh, that's a great and idea. work on that. That would be a lot of fun, right? And of course, you can support us via Patreon. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. You can go as little as two bucks a month. You can go up to a hundred dollars a month and we deliver overwhelming value at each stage. So if you haven't checked it out, please check it out because it's the easiest way you can support us and throw a few bucks our way. I'm ready. All right. But you've got a twist for us today, right? I do. Or rather, maybe it's a twist for me. More and this, so is, this is only a twist if you're watching on YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, if you're just listening, that's great. Thank you for listening. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But most of our most of our audience continues to listen exclusively, totally which fine. is which is totally fine. But if you want in on this little secret we're going to do, you'll have to stop your podcast player, go to YouTube, and start watching on YouTube. I have in my hand right now a yellow post-it note. <gasps> post you can note. see it if you're on uh, the YouTube. You're watching. I see it. Mm -hmm. On the other side of this post-it note are the nine words that I have for these for you for you to try and relate to martial arts. Hmm. So uh, if I just turn this around like this, oh, Tony, ah, might, I closed my eyes. Yeah, you might see it. But I thought it might be fun to give you, the people watching, hmm. a preview of the words I'm going to ask Jeremy to relate to martial arts. So, Jeremy, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And if you're watching on YouTube or turn around, whatever, and keep them closed. I'm going to turn a slight post-it note around. Mm -hmm. And you can see these words right here. And then the second list over here are the words that I'm going to try and have Jeremy relate to martial arts. Okay, you can open your eyes. Eyes are open. Okay. So, uh, at home, the audience knows the first word I'm going to give you, which is pint glass. Pint glass. <laughs> pint glass. All right. Uh, the, the greatest cliche in self-defense is the bar fight. It's the situation we talk about so often because it is often unexpected. It is often, you know, 
a very quick escalation and it doesn't have to be dependent on anything you've actually done. Two people on the other side of the bar could get into a scuffle and it could mean that you are now dragged into something, especially if those people have friends. Things could go flying, including pint glasses. Now we've all seen um, movies, TV shows where people will break bottles and they, they hold, hopefully, you know, they don't break the handle because guess what? That can still happen. It's not a guaranteed weapon. In, in fact, most of those bottles on movies and TV shows are special glass that breaks away. It's not real. They're not real bottles. But a pint glass could be a weapon too. I wouldn't hold it by the side. I would hold it by the base. And I would go at somebody's face with it. That strong edge, pint glasses are rugged. Pine glasses are very, very rough, like rugged. Yeah. And I could use that as a weapon. I could throw it. I could do all sorts of things with it. But here's what I think is even more valuable if I think about self-defense. Because remember, we've talked ad nauseum. We will continue to talk ad nauseum to some of you that self-defense is not does not start when violence occurs. It starts long before that. What's the number way, one way to stop any bar fight? Can I buy you a beer? Oh, yeah, sure. Can I buy you a drink? You know what? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I stepped on your foot. I'm sorry I flirted with your wife, girlfriend. I didn't know you were together. I'm sorry about this, that, or the other. Can I buy you a drink? That's going to solve 80 plus percent of your problems. I didn't, I'm making that statistic up um, because I think I'm underselling it. I've had enough interactions with people who were upset with me and a little bit of compassion, a little bit of empathy, a little bit of, of responsibility coupled with some generosity goes a tremendously long way. Can I buy you a drink? What are you drinking? Hey, bartender, can you get this person another whatever? Can you fill up their pint glass? Yeah. Diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Useful for all day training or okay. really long testings. No, um, I have never worn an adult diaper. But I have thought, as I've heard of others who drive long distances to get to seminars and things, I wonder if that's how they do that. I've heard that some, you know, long haul truckers wear diapers. But what is a diaper? A diaper isn't really designed for, hey, I don't want to use the bathroom. Diapers are for accidents. They're for literally CYA covering your butt. And there are a lot of things that we do in martial arts that are covering our butt figuratively. We wear sparring gear often. We restrict contact. If I spar with some, Andrew, you and I sparred a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I sparred last night. Were either of us going full, full speed, full power? No. Nope. No. Why? I don't want to hurt you. Because it's going to, right. <laughs> because we're going to get hurt if we do that. And that's there again. We're trying to protect ourselves. We're trying to learn as much as we can while not getting hurt. And so while a, a diaper is for, you know, accidental discharge of things, sometimes we miss pulling our punch. Sometimes we target the wrong area. Sometimes we miss gauge distance. Somebody steps in. They move to the side, whatever it is, and we make contact. And that and safety gear really is the equivalent there. Okay. Roof racks on your car. Oh, man. That's a good one. When <laughs> this is this is probably the most difficult one you've given me yet. What's the purpose of a roof rack? It's to carry stuff. Hey, I'm, I'm driving. I need to bring more stuff than I can fit in the car. The car is the easily accessed stuff. It's the stuff that, you know, any of us at any given time have a bunch of stuff in our car and it's stuff that we feel really strongly about. You know, we, we need it for safety. We need it for whatever it is. But a roof rack allows us to carry other things that are either large and cumbersome skis, snowboards, or 
they allow us to carry additional stuff. Now, when I think about martial arts stuff, I think about information, I think about knowledge. And you and I, over the last couple of years, have spent a bunch of time talking about note-taking, mm -hmm. having a notebook, yep. writing things down. If you've been training more than a few years, you do not have every bit of knowledge you've ever been gifted with or discovered in your brain. I have forgotten significant amounts of stuff that I wish I had written down because I could go back to it and go, oh yeah, what about that? What about this? I could review it and I could have access to it much in the way that if I reached up to whatever's on the roof rack, maybe it's not as convenient as having it in the car, but I still have access to it. I can still pull it down and use it and then put it back up. Or if it's something that I've decided is more important, I can take something out of the car and put it back up and swap positions. I love it. Volleyball. Uh, I assume the physical ball, the ball itself, not okay. the game. Okay. Um, where I really want to go, I'm trying to remember, trying to think if I've ever trained with anyone named Wilson. <laughs> and I don't think that I have, because that would have been fun. But you've had a will. We've had a Wilson on the show. Brendan Wilson, I believe, was on. We had on the show. Yes. Yes, I've got a book of his. He sent a book. It's on the on the shelf. Man, you're pushing me, and I, I love it. I, I hope the audience enjoys seeing me squirm. I've gotten better at finding words that are you, you have. easy. You, you absolutely have. Um, volleyball. All right. The way a volleyball is used, the game of volleyball, is really kind of weird. If you watch volleyball, whether it's indoor or outdoor, whether you know beach or indoor volleyball, the thing I'm always thinking when I watch that game, as someone who played a small amount of volleyball in gym class in high school, and that is that is it. That's the entire experience I have with volleyball. I'm constantly thinking, there's no way they're going to get to that ball. And somehow, most of the time, they get to that ball. It blows my mind. Well, how do they do that? They're in a good position. They're ready to move, and they are studying the person who's about to hit the ball to see what they're going to do. Because there are only so many angles they have, and they can predict what... They're, they're probably not going to hit it right to them. They're going to hit it to what seems to be the most difficult position that they have available to them, much in the way that most of us spar. Once you get beyond you know, the first couple of years, you're probably not kicking at people's guards anymore. You're trying to kick or punch where their hands are not. You're trying to make it more difficult for them so you can you know, hit, score, or whatever the, the, the methodology is. And if you watch really good fighters, whether we're talking MMA or point or boxing, I am continuously surprised at their ability to defend some of these incredibly complex fast, seemingly out of nowhere techniques. Paint. I was feeling good about volleyball. Paint. Whew. Okay. Paint. Paint covers imperfections, right? If it wasn't for, if, if we had beautiful hardwood on our walls. We probably wouldn't paint it unless we bought a house in the 70s. And then for some reason we would paint it and it would probably be green and not like an attractive green. Or wallpaper. Or we put up wallpaper on it, which is even worse. But paint hides imperfection. That's why it was really in invented. It was to make nice, colorful, relatively easy to change things out of space that maybe wasn't. This is not permitted in every school, but that's kind of what our uniforms are. Our gi, dobak, whatever you want to call it. If I feel like wearing a certain color at a certain school when I go teach, I'll, I'll do that. Sometimes it's white because that's, what, that's all they wear and I want to fit in. Sometimes it's red because all they wear is white and I don't want to fit in. 
depends on what my what I've been tasked with when I teach. Sometimes I need to fit in to buy, get their buy-in. Sometimes I need to be so completely out of depth for them that they they're open. It doesn't seem like more of the same. Different uniforms, different colors make me feel differently. I have, there, there are a pair of pants in there. My, 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 right, right there. That's where all my, my geese are. And I call them geese because I'm primarily a Karatheka. Uh, there are a pair of pants in there that I first started wearing in competition when I was 15. I'm 43 now. They were several years old when I got them. Hmm. They're still my favorite pants. When I put those pants on, actually, let, let me put it this way. I have never lost an open competition while wearing those pants. Hmm. So you better believe that's my super suit. That's my paint, right? It covers the imperfections that I know I have. If I put those on, it's on. Okay, next word, nails. Not fingernails, carpentry nails. Like this one. Sure. This is a, this is a finish nail, a tap nail. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nails hold things together, generally wood, right? usually nail other um, substances together. We could think of them as connecting two separate pieces. And there are times in our training where we're trying to connect concepts. This is actually the hardest one. They keep getting harder. You're the worst. <laughs> if I'm teaching or learning and there's a concept that is rooted in, let's say, stances. You know, we're working stances. We're going up and down the floor in stances and understanding weight balance and everything. And then we start working punches, 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 you know, understanding the certain punch, back fist, whatever. And now I want to put the two together. Kind of have to nail the two together, don't I? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we think of those two things as going together, but they don't have to. And the only reason that we, we don't think of them as separate is because we so rarely train them separately. I don't know too many people that teach punches while people are just standing there in any old position. I don't know too many people who teach stance work without adding kicks and punches to it. Well, if I have, you know, the, the header on a window, you know, the space above it, those pieces, those boards are nailed together. That header could, you know, I could take it down and I could work on it down here. If the window doesn't sit completely flush or, you know, it's unlevel or something, I could take those boards down and remove the nails and have a better understanding of that wood in its place and know why, where it fits and maybe what the problem was, you know, why was it installed this way? Nails connect things. And sometimes we have bent nails and we've got to pull them out to have a better understanding of what the materials are underneath. Laundry detergent. Wash your damn uniforms. <laughs> Spotlight. whether we like being in the spotlight or not, there are, there are lessons being there. Most of us remember the first time we were asked to stand in front of a class and demonstrate something, to lead the warm up, to teach a group, to compete, whatever it was. Most of us remember the stress of being in front of a large group or any group and having the spotlight, literal <laughs> or figurative, on us. Regardless of how many times you've been there and done that, it teaches us something. It might teach us that we're not as good as we thought we were because under a little bit of pressure, we cave. We're not as good as we would have been otherwise. It may teach us that we actually thrive under pressure. And maybe we need to find a way to apply a little bit more pressure to ourselves when we're not in the spotlight. Or... Maybe it simply teaches us that it's nice to be recognized because it's rare that people are put in the spotlight 
when they have little opportunity to succeed. I don't know too many instructors who would grab a student and say, can you lead warm-ups on their, I don't know, second day? Fair. <clears throat> okay, portable heater. I've trained in some really cold spaces. <laughs> Unheated, thin floor, no insulation, roof side floor, and you get there 30 minutes ahead and you turn on the heaters and you wear shoes for the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes, then you're down to socks, and maybe after 30 minutes, you're you're down to bare feet. Uh, and I'm thankful that portable heaters exist because otherwise, I probably would have ended up with frostbite during my competition career. Okay, last word that I have: fishing pole. Thank you for ending on an easy one. Teach a man to fish. He's for a day. Wait, no. Give a man a fish, he eats for a day. There it is. Teach a man to fish, he eats forever. There are a lot of instructors, new instructors, who just want people to do it. But just, just do this. Do what I'm doing. Mimic what I'm doing. And they don't spend time helping them understand. Because they don't recognize that understanding is a longer process. I can get just about anybody to do just about any form. Give me an hour. I'll teach just about anybody, just about any form that I know. Sure. They might do it great, but I can get them to remember it. And yes, I mean that like in an hour, I can get anybody to remember a form, but it doesn't mean they get it just because you can do something. Doesn't mean you understand it. Mm -hmm. And I think understanding matters far more because that person's eventually going to forget that form unless they keep doing it. But when I teach it to them, if I give them the lessons, if I help them understand why some of these things are together over time, because I'm teaching them the form first, I'm teaching them why and, and how later, because they have to have a framework. You can't understand a thing until you can do the thing. Not well, anyway. The understanding will remain. There are elements of forms that I learned. I don't remember the form anymore. There are physical contortions, not the right word, but it's the best one I've got, you know, positions, physical positions that I learned to put my body into from certain forms. I don't remember the forms, but I can put myself in those positions. There are lessons learned about balance and timing and movement that exist still within me from certain instructors. I don't remember the class. I don't remember what we were working on, but I remember going, oh, okay, now I get it. The fishing pole is the understanding. If I just fish for you, yeah, I'll get you some fish. I'd rather you figure it out for yourself with some help so you can understand it better. Yeah, that the, uh... Give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, he eats for the rest of his life is good. The other one I really like is um, build a man a fire, he'll be warm for a day. Mm. Set a man on fire, he's warm the rest of his life. <laughs> that's not where I expected that to go. Oh, that's so funny. It's so morbid, but it's hysterical. I love it. Okay. Thanks, for, thanks for bringing in the, the, the PG-13 dad jokes. That's right. So uh, that's that's my list. I, scr I scratched them off as we went. That was a lot of fun. So I, I want to know, and, and maybe you, maybe you, they should talk to you, but I want to know what people think of what we're doing with this. Because again, I'm not aware of anybody else doing content like this. Yeah. And, and that's why we keep doing it, because it's fun for both of us. It is. And it's different. And we're trying to be different. And send me your words. I'll, your your word could be on this list. And if it does, I'll even credit you. I'll say this word Perfect. comes from whomever. Perfect. Love uh, it. Andrew at Whistlekick, MarshallArtsRadio.com. And while, the, while they're fun, at the same time, I hope in this kind of quick hit format, people are are taking some things from it. You know, is, is this the most articulate I have been? No, no. And that's part of the appeal, right? It's kind of, it's kind of raw. There were some long pauses in there while yeah. I've had to yeah. think. 
yeah. but it keeps me on my toes and it makes me better. There's a martial arts element to the way that we're doing this, constantly challenging to, to get better. How do we do different? How do we do better? How do we improve? Right? You had to think about those words mm -hmm. and you weren't necessarily trying to stump me, but you were trying to challenge me. Yeah. I, I, they were things that I was like, Oh, maybe that's a word. And then if I could come up with very quickly how it relates, it didn't go on the list. Yeah. Fun times. Thank you. Yeah. Andrew. You're welcome. That was Anything fun. you want to add for we no. fade? No, no, that's right. good. Audience. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribing in all the places. YouTube, turn on the notifications. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, you name it. It should be pretty, it should be everywhere. Everywhere you can find podcasts. If you manage to find a spot that our podcast is not, please let me know. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you subscribe, please subscribe in multiple places. Leave reviews. Help us out in that way. And if you want to bring me or me and Andrew or me, Andrew, and everyone I can find for a seminar to your school or your area, let's talk about it. We're we're constantly working on that stuff. I love I love teaching. If you can't tell, I really do love sharing the things that, that I love to teach with people, whether it's new or not. And if your school is not quite where you want it to be, if you would like to have more students, more revenue, more profit, better culture, whatever it is, we offer consulting. I lead the consulting team as I do with most of the teams that we have. And you can talk to me again, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. I have a 100% success rate with not only paying for myself, but making improvements and the average length of payback as I survey the schools is under two months. So I guess I'm kind of good at what I do. Uh, what else? I got my list. I think we did all the things. I think so. Until next time, train, train hard. hard. Smile and have, have a great, great day. day.